Okay, welcome to the wonderful world of vector math and CG math in general. And um, this might be something that you're familiar with from before. What we're going to be covering is um, a vector um, addition, subtraction, multiplication. So if you're already familiar with those things, um, I don't think there's going to be anything groundbreaking new for you. Hopefully it might shed some light on some things, but it's mostly f just to make sure that everybody is on the same kind of playing field. So, what is a vector? Well, it's something that has direction and magnitude, scale, or length. So what am I talking about? Well, it's often represented with an arrow. The arrow indicates the direction of the vector, and the magnitude or the scale or length is basically the size of the vector. You know, it's how long is it, how big basically is it. Um, you often see magnitude, scale, and length used interchangeably, uh, and they all basically mean the same thing in re with regards to a vector. On a vector as well, there's some, uh, the kind of mathematical names for it, or that might be good to know, is just the beginning of a vector so like the starting point, is called the tail, while the end point of a vector is called the head. So if you see those terms used around, that's basically what they're referring to. Now, this is a vector, this is a vector, this is a vector, this is a vector, and this is a vector. Now, I just want to mention a couple of things here now. As we see, all of these are going in different directions and they have different scale as well. While these two have the exact same scale, but they're going in opposite directions. Well, are they the same then? No, they're not. Even though they're going in this exact same kind of um, line we could say but they're going in the different direction and they have the exact same scale and it doesn't mean that they're the same even though they're matching on a lot of things now these two have the exact same scale and the exact same direction but we can see here they're not starting at the same place are these vectors equal are they the same well yes because that is one of the key things about vectors and how they differ from points. So, <laughs> point or vector? Well, a point defines position in space, while a vector defines a movement or displacement. Now that basically says that, you know, if we're looking at this mountain and we're saying like, you can find, a, it's a, at the top, it's a great viewpoint. Right? We're, we're specifying a specific location. You can think of it as like a GPS location. If you give this to anybody, they're always going to end up at exactly that spot. Now, a vector is more of a direction, how to get to a point. Right? We're saying, instead of saying, oh, this is the exact coordinates, we're saying, oh, to get to the, the mountaintop, you would have to go along here, blah, blah, blah. You'd basically have to go this. And, you know, if you had a helicopter, you'd fly straight up like this. Now, that's not to say that just because you end up at the same point, you can still have different vectors that start in different places and end up at the same point, right? So that's the key difference to understand between, that's the difference between a point and a vector. Now, what is a vector made up of? Well, it's made up of components, and components is basically a list of numbers that you can think of, and where you will often hear the terms something dimensional vector, uh, usually a number like a one-dimensional, two-dimensional, five-dimensional vector. That basically just indicates how many numbers is in that list. So one dimensional vector has one number, two dimensional vector has two numbers, and a three dimensional vector has three numbers. What it basically means, these numbers, is if you have a one dimensional vector, it basically has a it only has a one dimensional number plane that it can move on, right? We can only have positive or negative numbers and we can only be on any of those points. So if we had a vector 
a one-dimensional vector that had where the, the number was three, this is basically the vector that we then have. Now, if we had a two-dimensional vector where we say we still have three for, let's just say it like for our x-coordinate, but we add in a y-coordinate for two. Well, how does our vector then look? Well, it's basically this, right? So the idea is that you would move along one vector and you can move along that other vector. So we're basically moving up in two, uh, sorry, up in two, up in y, and we're getting to that point. So that's how you can read vectors and understand these, right? Now, when we come into vector addition, we let's say that we have these vectors here and we want to add them all together. What you would do is visually, you just take vector A and you uh, take vector B, place the tail of vector B at the head of A, and then you do the same with C, but just to the head of B, and then that will give you your new vector D, right? So even though each of these are moving in like these kind of like zigzag patterns, remember that a vector only has a direction and a magnitude, so it will have none of the curvy motion. It will just be in a straight line. So this will be our final vector D when we add up all of the the resulting, the previous vectors, sorry. Now, how do we actually do that like mathematically? Well, you will take each of the components, the corresponding components. So as we're looking at in the one dimensional vector and two dimensional vector, you would have your X, Y, and Z or your first index, second index, third index, and you just add those together. So to get the new um, x position of the d vector, we take all of the x components of the a, b, and c, and the same for the y. The order doesn't matter here because we're always adding up these things, so it's always going to give us the end up in the same location. You can use the plus minus average node in Maya to, if you create that node and set it to sum, it's basically going to do this for you. Now for vector subtraction, let's say that we have the same vectors, but we want to subtract them. So now here's a bit of a different way is we would still first take our A and we'd still place B at the head of A, but we'd now have to basically go negative B. So we'd have to place the head of B at the head of A and the head of C at the tail of A which results in our new vector d. So this is the one that we get. Now that's a bit of like a, a weird way of thinking of it. So what we can do instead is that we can reverse them. So we basically, all the vectors that we want to subtract, we reverse them. So in this case, we only want to reverse vector b and c because we still need to travel along a before we remove it. So when we now have that, we can just use vector addition for that, right? So we just move along A, and then we do the tail to B, and then we do C. You can see that we still end up in the same spot. So if you're trying to do this like visually, that might be a bit clearer. Now, we with as with um, addition, it's exactly the same concept. You will take each of the components and like the corresponding components and subtract them from each other. You can do this in Maya with the plus minus average node set to subtract. Now, how do we deal with multiplication? Well, what I'm talking about here now is multiplication by a scalar. So just a single number like 3.5, 5 or 6 or minus 2. And what we'll end up with then is basically we will end up scaling the magnitude or the length along the direction. So let's say that we have this vector a, right? And we want to scale that. Well, if we scale that by two, we multiply it by two, what we're getting then is this new vector b that is basically consistent of two vector a's, right? Because we it's like with normal scaling. If you have one, you multiply that by two, you now end up with two, right? So if you just think of A as one, we will end up with a double 
A, which returns our B. And if you wanna, if we multiply that by 0 0.5, we basically end up with half of the original vector, right? So if we take two of B, we'll end up with the same vector A. Now, what if we do negative two instead of two? Well, we're still going to get the same B as we had originally, but in the opposite direction, right? Because we're still having two A's, but we're basically doing them negative. So instead of going in the same direction, it's now going in the opposite direction. And to do this, it's very straightforward. You um, To actually do the calculation, you take each of the components and you multiply them by the scalar value that you have. You can do this very easily by using the multiply divide node in Maya. Now I think one of the really key things to think about here as well is the vector math that we looked into now relates to Maya because the transforms, like the translate values in Maya is basically a three-dimensional vector. That basically means that it's all of those values is the displacement in that local space, right? It's movement that is happening in the in the space of that transform. Now, that means that we can use all the previous operations that we had, right? So even though we're th looking at these things as arrows, we don't really have to visualize them like that or treat them like that. We can treat them as points in space. So it's really important to kind of get that idea there as well. Um, and as soon as you get that, then we, you can open up and do some really, really interesting things with vectors. Now, let's jump quickly back into local space. I just want to make sure that we are using the same language. So when I'm talking about world space versus local space, the world space will represent an absolute value in the kind of Maya world, right? Can you think of it as I'm sitting in my house. Now, if I give you the GPS coordinates for where I'm sitting, that's an absolute value on Earth. But I might also give you like a relative location. Like I'm, uh, I'm three meters away from my door and I'm sitting one meter up in the air. You know, that, that's like the local values inside my house. So when you think of it in terms of these, the local values for a transform, sorry, the world space, is all of the local values for a transform plus the local values for all of its parent transform, right? So if you look at this um, transform here, you, we can see that that's at the origin. It's at the grid where it would basically be zero, 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 right? So the world space location for that is zero, zero, zero. While if we look at it, because it's parented to that joint chain, actually it has a displacement it has a vector from this to this, which actually represents if, if we took the the local values that that had and just applied it outside this hierarchy, it would end up here. So I hope that kind of uh, makes sure that we're a bit all on the same page. If not, do let me know and we can clarify this a bit more.